Hey, welcome to the One Piece of the Time Distilling Institute with your host, the alchemist of Indiana's Black Forest, Alan Bishop. Hey, this channel is all about home distilling and legal distilling. If you've got questions, reach out to us in the comments below, social media, or via bishopshomegrown at gmail.com. And don't forget to check out thealchemistcabinet.com. Hey, what's up, beautiful people? Back with another One Piece at a Time talking head video, and I hope everyone has had a wonderful, fantastic week. And uh, you're doing the things that you love to do, because certainly I've been doing what I love to do, guys. Started a new job at the new distillery, Old Homestead Distilling Company <clears throat> at Potoka Lake. So uh, it is associated with a piece of property that has a very cool name that I don't think has been announced yet, but will be in the near future. Uh, we have, of course, the distillery that I'm working on putting together right now with my father, Dale Bishop, as well as the owners, uh, Stephen Bartels and Heather Seitzer and Steve Shirk, as well as my one of my best friends in the world, Julie Kasperzak, my sister, my actual sister. I worked with her at Spirits of French Lake for years. She designed my labels and all that stuff. And, uh, man, <clears throat> I can't tell you how happy it makes me to be a part of this. Uh, of course, it's taken a lot of time. So, you know, doing videos has become a little bit harder to get done uh, with the hours that I'm putting in and the drive over there and all that stuff because it is an hour plus drive to work every day. So... We will be doing a lot more videos in the future, though, because we will actually be doing several videos about Old Homestead Distilling Company. Uh, not only is the distillery there, there's a brewery next door. The distillery actually will have a 28-room hotel attached to it. There's a winery there. There's land cabins. There's floating cabins. There's a marina. All the things, guys. It's going to be cool. I'm going to be able to do classes there. <clears throat> if you guys want to come study with the Alchemist of the Black Forest in the future, you'll be able to buy uh, packages where you can come and take a class with me at Old Homestead Distillery and Old El Bishop and uh, stay in the hotel. How cool is that, right? We can really dive in depth if you're there in person and get into some stuff. And uh, we're going to try to make those affordable in whatever way we can. But guys, I cannot tell you how happy I am um, to, to have this thing up and going, uh, you know, or to be getting it up and going, uh, to be a part of it, to have people that I consider family. Um, you know, this isn't just a, a business arrangement. This is a life arrangement, a lifestyle arrangement. It's something really special, really close to my heart. And it means the world to me and nothing against well, those guys there at Spirits of French Lake. No bad blood there whatsoever. I support them. Of course, a big part of my legacy is at Spirits of French Lake, you know, uh, 3,800 barrels over an eight year period, double pot distilled from start to finish, right? A lot of stuff tied up there. Now, I will tell you, I'm not going to be copying or imitating in any way anything that I did at Spirits of French Lick. Even though I came up with all that stuff and designed all that stuff, uh, that is theirs to do with as they wish. Uh, what I will be doing at Old Homestead will be substantially different. I can't wait for you guys to hear about the products because a lot of stuff we've talked about on the channel is actually going to be able to be made at Old Homestead, including Agave Spirits, Legitimate Absence, uh, if you can think of it, I'll probably make it there. And we've set up the distillery specifically to be able to do those things. Uh, three stills. We actually have a fourth still, but I'm not sure. It may stay at the winery for high proof brandy production for fortified wines. But uh, of the three stills, there is a 500 gallon stripping still. There's a 250 gallon pot still uh, with an offset column and an offset gin basket. Uh, and then there's a 250 gallon still that, you know, I sort of jokingly refer to as the fuck around and find out still because. Uh, it will have several modifications, including a double thumper system from 13 stills, which incorporates one of my old 40 gallon home stills uh, from Cold Springs Copper Works, as well as a Tennessee thumper I can switch in and out that Rick Gibson built that I've made some modifications to or I'm making modifications to, and a double inline thumper system from Ozark Stillworks. Uh, which Wayne will be building shortly. Anyways, that's all stuff to come. So, uh, Really looking forward to it. As always, please check out thealchemistcabinet.com. You can still order the Distiller's Almanac for this year. Not sure how much longer that'll be up there, but at some point we will phase that out because we're getting in a little further into the year now. You know, and I want you guys to have full use of the information as much as possible. I have started on the new edition of that. That will be a yearly thing that we do. There's nobody else out there doing Distiller's Almanacs. There's very few people out there that I am aware of that are walking that line between the esoteric and the spiritual and the practical distilling realms. And I think you guys see some value in that or you wouldn't be supporting it up to this point.
Could be wrong, but so far you guys have supported it. And I'm having me a little glass of whiskey here from Stolen Wolf in Pennsylvania, Lidditz, Pennsylvania. Been doing some work with Eric and Aviana and Jim, and uh, be going back out there in May, as a matter of fact, to do some other cool work with those guys. But get you a bottle of this if you ever get a chance. All right, let's get into some questions. <clears throat> See what we got here. I can't wait to show you guys this distillery. Like when I say I'm excited about guys, you don't even know. I've worked 10 years to get to this point to feel like somewhere was actually home, uh, to feel like somewhere was actually family. This, this is that chance, that opportunity. And uh, to be able to have it in a place where I can have classes, have a hotel room, share it with you guys, share it with the world. And do what I know how to do that I've worked so hard at uh, my, the entirety of my life. The art form that I love and the craft that I love. And to be able to do the things that home distillers do at home on a large scale basis that I could never do at any other distillery. Mm. <laughs> Anyways, uh, question here. So, I'm a fan of flavor and whiskey. I just built a thumper. 7.5 gallon keg with an infuser fed by a 15 gallon keg. I'm curious if putting some of the spent grain in the thumper throughout the run would be similar to distilling on grain. My thoughts were to have a couple of gallons of soupy grain left over to infuse with. Besides an ounce or so of heads that would come through right after an infusion, could this be comparable to distilling on grain? This is a great question. This is actually something I have done many, many times. Fix my phone. It's about to fall. Hold on. Sorry. Um, but yes, this is something I've actually done many, many times with thumpers. And with gin baskets running the steam through them. Now the trick is, you know, obviously make sure you don't, you, you have a way to get that grain out of there. Make sure if you're going to use a gin basket, for example, if it's in line, that there's no way for that grain to fall down in and actually get scorched. But yes, you will get a lot more flavor out of that if you can add that to your thumper. And if you can add it periodically and still be able to get it out at the end to clean it out, go for it. You'd be surprised how much that will change the flavor over time. Um, it is a great little trick that works great for people who can't put the grain directly into their still. Um, I've done it many times on a 50 gallon still with a good size thumper and a good size clean out, uh, and never had any issue whatsoever. Now, the thing you got to be careful of with a thumper is you want to make sure that you don't add so much of that grain to it that it cools the thumper down and it stops, uh, basically boiling in there because what's going to happen is, if it's boiling and you're adding that grain, all of that alcohol is moving about, that grain's moving about, etc. There's no chance for it to plug your downcomer pipe, right? Going your pipe basically coming from the still going to the bottom of your thumper. If you put enough in there at one time that that thing stops rolling, there's always a possibility that grain settles out and gets into that downcomer. Now you have a pressure problem, right? Building back up that post arm, going back over to the still, possibly blowing off a pressure relief valve or a cap or blowing a seal out of a, uh, or not a seal, but a seam out of your still or out of your thumper. So please do this carefully. Now, something I've had better luck with that I like a little bit better, you know, people build those infusers like what you're talking about on those thumpers. One thing I love to do with corn whiskey, well, corn shine as it were, right? Corn sugar shine is to take that corn sugar shine, run it like you're gonna run, uh, you know, on a normal single pass thumper system. And then after I get the heads off, what I have is I've already got sweet corn, including its juice, canned sweet corn, setting in that infuser. Start dumping that corn in there, man. That sweet corn flavor coming through in that, uh, you know, sugar shine corn whiskey is phenomenal. That's actually, honest to God, that's one of my favorite, not just white whiskeys or white spirits, that is one of my favorite spirits of all time. You do good heavy cup cuts on that, uh, on your heads and your hearts and your tails, and then you infuse the shit out of that with that sweet corn. <sighs> that kind of whiskey you get you in trouble real quick. Ask me how I know. So I uh, hope that answered your question. All right, let me see what else we got here. I know there's several questions here. There's some that I can answer and some that I can't because... I don't have enough information. You guys are sending such great questions at this point. I don't have enough information on some of these questions to answer you correctly. I know there's a question here about electric stills, power input, and that sort of stuff. And while Old Homestead is an all-electric distillery with oil jackets, I don't yet know enough about electricity to be able to uh, answer those questions in a white way. Right, right way. Sorry, I was looking at the shirt in the background because a dog is stuck in here and she's trying to get out and she keeps scratching at the door and uh, the shirt moved. So anyways, 
Um, reflux condenser versus deflamator. Column placement, water temp, use one with plates versus the other without plates, etc. Maybe a good one for a talking head video. So I presume that what you're asking here, Chuck, is what is the difference between a reflux condenser and a, def and a deflagmator? So honestly, they're both basically the same thing. I refer to them both as a uh, deflamator um, pretty much every time. So typically, you know, most people are going to run their deflamator with uh, either a column directly on top of the still or offset from the still. I prefer on the still because the drainage works works much much better. If you run an offset, you got to make sure that you actually are able to get that liquid that falls out the bottom to drain back into the still, which can be a little bit of a pain in the ass sometimes. Uh, so I do like them directly above the still itself. Um, I love columns, hybrid columns on pot stills. I absolutely do, even with bubble caps. I'd like to take grain whiskey sometimes if I'm going to make a white whiskey and make it lighter, take it up to one, you know, 70 or so and do that with, you know, four plates if you want to. Uh, maybe run half the time with the plates on, then turn the plates off and then just play with the D flag. But I also like to run just pot still with a D flag on with no plates as well. It's amazing the differences in flavors that you can get off of pot still. I know there are guys out there like, oh, straight up pot still is the way to go. More power to you guys. Nothing wrong with that. Um, but for me, a pot still is just a batch system. And that batch system can be modified in any way you want to modify it. If you want to modify it and make it into a hybrid, go for it. If you want to modify it and put a D flag on it with no plates, go for it. If you want to modify it and throw a thumper on there, go for it. Still pot still. You're still starting out with the single most wide ranging flavor profile that you can compared to a continuous column still. It's all about how you refine what you want over time. But yes, as far as I'm concerned, a deflamator and a reflux condenser are pretty much the same thing. It's really just kind of in how you use them. Usually, you know, somebody refers to something as a deflamator. That's what you're going to hear in the wider legal industry. They're running active plate distillation or they're running some kind of packing as many home distillers do. And if you hear reflux condenser, you're probably talking about a home distiller um, who is maybe running a pack column or most likely like me running something like the Ozark Steelworks, um, uh, Mr. Fusion head, uh, sort of thing where you're actually just refluxing directly back into the pot still itself to get a little lighter, more floral sort of characteristic. So, all right, guys, as always, reach out to me with your questions, bishopshomegrown at gmail.com, uh, thealchemistcabinet.com, um, where else? YouTube comments, social media, etc. And check out Old Homestead Distillery. Hey, go to their Facebook page, like Old Homestead Distillery. Go to their Instagram. Go to their TikTok. I think there's a TikTok. I'm not sure. Go, you know, keep an eye out for the website, etc. I'm telling you guys right now, this will be the first time that me, as someone who is a passionate distiller in all forms of the art, will have such wide-ranging access to equipment on that scale that we can actually start to adapt the things that we do at home to an actual commercial scale and have a platform to be able to hold classes, get you guys out there and teach you. It is a beautiful hotel, a beautiful building, a beautiful setting next to a beautiful lake. You're not going to want to miss out on it, guys. I love y'all. Later.